past weekend was a tremendous blessing for me. I mean, absolutely just crazy. Uh, blessed last weekend before last when I was up in the mountains and uh, the word of the Lord was so rich and God uh, began to speak to me in my room at a you know, private room way down uh, the hall. Well, it wasn't that quite way down the hall, but uh, I felt isolated, you know, from the hustle and bustle of uh, things that go on uh, during conferences. And uh, while I was there, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me, mother, just the exact same things that you did. Holy Spirit said, listen, greater is coming. Don't worry about your start right now, for I shall send people from the north. I mean, he just began to minister to me about not giving up and seeing the manifestation that he has promised. And so I wanted to share that with you all, that there are times when it may be just you and me. Amen. But the Lord said, does not do not despise the day of small beginning because God. there are there are those who Jesus. want to embrace total truth. Amen. Yes, yes. The Lord told me to pick it, pull out. I remember the sign that you made, mother, divine truth. That was the name of yes. um, my ministry yes. table. Uh-huh. And the Lord went back and said, I want you to begin to declare yes. and use yes. divine truth Jesus. again, because there are those that are oh. looking for truth, yes. not a gimmick. Not a scheme, not a showcase on Sunday mornings, but amen. But he's looking for those that sincerely want the truth and they want to hear what the spirit of the Lord uh, is saying. So I wanted to share that with you all. The word of the Lord, we're going back to Revelation and um, we're going to Revelation chapter two. Glory to God. And we're going to talk about the third uh, church here today. And the third church is the church of Pergamos. Say Pergamos. So we're going to be talking about the church of Pergamos today. And we're going to be talking about mediocrity. Okay. The church of mediocrity. Glory to God. And how God feels about the church of mediocrity. So, uh, Revelations chapter two, begin at verse number 12. Uh, let's see. Mother Hefni, if you have it, could you read that for me? Praise the Lord. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos. Not Pergamos. Pergamos. Right. These things saith he which have the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou doest, dwellest. Even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto the idols Come on now. and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitan, Nicola- Nicola- uh-huh. which, thing, which thing I hate? Repent or else I will come unto, unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that have an ear, let him hear. But the Spirit said unto the churches, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden th- hidden manner, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And until Okay, the- that's fine. That's fine. You can stop right there. Amen. 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 Pergamos, the church of mediocrity. Um Today, we're going to talk about mediocrity, and we're going to see this in uh, the chapter and verses uh, that we see here. Mediocrity, okay, when, when we look at it in contrast to, or we look at it in um, the light of the Church of Pergamos, uh, mediocrity is a doctrine, okay? Now, some may say, Apostle Gray, how are you going to say mediocrity is a doctrine. The word doctrine uh, means a body or system of teachings related to a particular 
subject. So it's a system of teachings. And I find in the 21st century church that the teachings that are going forth in the 21st century church is creating a culture of mediocrity. Okay. It's not like it was uh, in the days gone by where the teachings and the preachings uh, provoked salvation. It provoked holiness. It provoked um, separation in terms of separating yourself from what is clean and unclean. Uh, How many of you can remember the time going to church and said, good God almighty, I hope the preacher don't preach on me today. You know what I mean? And you kind of sat in your seat, you know, hoping the word will hold in your breath, hoping the word uh, pass you by. And even if the word hit you, you tried to act like it didn't. But before service was over, tears running down your eyes, you crying out repentance. Ain't nobody, nobody had to say repent. You begin to repent in your heart. That's right. The messages, the system of the church was about salvation. The systems of teaching in the church was about uh, growing closer to the Lord. But we find now that the teachings uh, that's going forth in 21st century church is provoking the doctrine of mediocrity. The teachings keep the people at a level that is under acceptability. Okay. That's right. That's right, Apostle. That's right. And they use grace as a scapegoat. Jesus. That's right. You know, we, we, we see leaders standing up and, you know, yes. preaching and then they confess their sin yes. and then they say, well, ain't nobody perfect. Right. You know, for yes. all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. You know, yes, that's scripture. But then there, there are other scriptures that declare we must be holy. Yes. That's right. Amen. And so. We, we must understand that, you know, uh, this chapter, I believe in uh, chapter two, uh, talking to the church of Pergamos really is a message to leadership. All right. That's right. It is a message that we have the responsibility of what we're teaching. Yeah, right. What doctrine are we uh, uh, expelling, yes. expounding to the people? Is it a doctrine of mediocrity, a doctrine of it's OK, a doctrine of, you know, do your own thing. I've never seen it, uh, Mother Hefney, where so many Christians can read the word That's right. and know the word uh-huh. and not do the word Ooh, Jesus. and then say, you know, right. it, but God knows my heart. Yes. 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 That is a, That is that is a that's so common. That is. Mm-hmm. It has created a state of mediocrity uh, in our church. Uh, mediocrity means to settle for less than perfection. Mm. The enemy has brought many mindsets to the place that since nobody's perfect, I don't need to reach for perfection. If I just get close enough, it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. But when I grew up, they told us 99 and a half. Well, Come on now. Glory to God. We, we were singing songs about it. Love, I'm running. Gotta make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Lord, I'm running. Gotta make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Come on, ninety-nine won't do. Glory to God. There were no excuses. Amen. But in present day church, we say it's all right. If you can sing. All right. Keep on singing because we need to we need a production of singers and leaders. know the person is not striving to make 100 leaders have created a culture of mediocrity. Yes. And we say, you know, leaders say, you know, well, I can't control the people and I can't make nobody be saved. But I tell you this, you can create an atmosphere in your church that those that are not saved, they'll either get saved or leave. Amen. Amen. I've had people come to me and say, Apostle Gray, I I, I just can't come to your church. I I, I just can't come. I said, why? Because I ain't right. And as much as as we exude love here in that love is a standard of holiness unto God. The church needs to return to a place of awe. 
Amen. Not 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 a fashion show. That's right. Not worrying about your outfit, but when you look, when I was growing up at church, it, I felt like when I walked in the church, it was like ah, oh, like angels. Praise mm-hmm. God. It was holy. Yes. You know what I mean? I didn't walk up on a pulpit until it was, my, I think it was my, my first time to preach. Yes, amen. Why? Because they told us it was holy. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Consecrated. That's right. Now listen, I'm not saying that the leaders of old were, were perfect, but there was a doctrine. That's yes. right. Of holiness. Amen. The doctrine that we are teaching now is that if you are appointed by the pastor, then you can you got a right to be on the pulpit. With your fornication, right. with your adultery, right. with your lying, with stealing. That's right. Yeah, that ain't right. It doesn't it doesn't matter, my mother. So long as you are helping me produce a church service that is better than a man down the street. Amen. We become in competition one with another. Amen. How many people can I draw? That's right. How many folks can I get? But you're not worried about. You're not concerned enough. I'm not saying you're not concerned at all, but you're not concerned enough about the people who do come. Amen. It's not just about having a good church service, but I'm concerned about your soul growing out of mediocrity. We all, every day, are faced with the choice. Either you're going to strive for perfection or you're just going to be mediocre. How many of you have ever had to deal with that? I know I have. Well, the enemy will say, you know what? Don't, that's all right, Norma. You ain't got to press today. You ain't got to go in and pray and do all this. Just, just be saved. No. I used to say that. I'm Honestly, I used to say... Uh, when I was avoiding my calling, I said, look, I just, I just want to be saved. I don't need to preach. I don't have to be in the limelight. All I want to do is just sit in the pew and I'm going to be at, sit in the pew, be saved and look good in my clothes. Cause then I was wearing hats and come on now, wearing hats and, uh, heels. They didn't call them stiletto back then, but heels and. Um, that's all I wanted to do. Look like a look like like we call it, look like a first lady. Just wanted to do that. That's all I wanted to do. Just be saved. Praise God. But as God began to uh, call me into the work of the ministry, my heart began to strive for more. My heart began to desire to please God. It's not a position that we seek after, but we seek to please God. And if this is what He wants, then this is what we give Him. Amen. Amen. But when I'm going through looking at si- certain situations, my mind will say, okay, you just lay it down. Just, it's all right. You can just be mediocre because that is acceptable. I remember my mom would say, uh, C's are not acceptable in this house. Jesus, Not acceptable. Preachers have got leaders have got to begin to say mediocrity is not acceptable in this house. Leaders set the standard, the teachings by which the 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 uh, the followers, the parishioners must follow. Amen. And that is what is was wrong with the church of Pergamos. So we can see the church of Pergamos is the church of mediocrity. Yes. Okay. Present day church have dummied down the version of the word of God. Yes, they have. And we are no longer just called the body of Christ. Now we just called the church. Right. Mm. And there is a difference. Mm. You can be in the church and be mediocre and just do what you want to do. But in the body of Christ, you cannot. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You can be in the church and sing uh, to the glory of God and your life is imperfect. But in the body of Christ, you cannot. I I need you to understand there's a difference. Glory to God. I didn't say it first, but the Bible says there's a difference between clean and unclean. And God is looking for a manifestation of those people that will stand on holiness side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You used to sing another song. Whose side are you leaning on? 
Many leaders are leading on the side of mediocrity because it gains more popularity. That's right. That's right. Yes. Amen. It gains, brother, brother James, who uh, is a is a borderline crack addict. Yes. Come on now. Jesus. Yes. Yes. It gains Sister Sally May, who got a degree in Kissing. Yes. By lowering the bar, yes. you know, we have let those in right. and it has called us Come on. the church to be mediocre. Right. My God, yes. my God. Yes. Amen. I've lived long enough to see it. Mm-hmm. I remember there was a time that he, you, you walk past the church and you changed your behavior. Yes. Right. Oh, yes, yes. Lord. Right. Amen. You're you didn't right. curse. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> If I mean, and they do it to me now, but you know, I remember if you were in the presence of you know a deacon yes. or elder, yes. you ain't say certain things. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you would tell your unchurch friends. Yes. Shh, wait, don't yeah. say that. Yet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but now we have dummied down to when folks curse, uh-huh. and they say. Yes. Oh, ooh, forgive me. What do you say? It's all right. Yes, Come on now. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody say it ain't all right. It ain't all right. It's not all right. Ooh. Yeah, when they say that, I say, okay. But it's not all right. Not all right. And we have become mediocre in the church. We've dummied it down. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Lower the standard. That's right. Okay. That's right. There was some sheet that couldn't couldn't jump over, and so we just said, you know what? I'm just gonna lower the bar. Yes, amen. Yes. Oh Lord. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Mediocrity. I want you to understand is like a moth that weakens the thread of any garment. Yes. Jesus. Have you ever had moth-eaten clothes? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's little patches. Yes. That have weakened the threads. And you know if I pull on it. It's going to make a hole. Okay. And so what happens is. Because of the patches. You end up giving away. Or throwing away. That garment. Okay. That garment may not necessarily be unwearable. But because of the patches. You got to give it away. Or throw it away. Right. Now think about the church. Yes. We have patches of mediocrity mm-hmm. where those have weakened the thread of God's holiness. Yes. That's right. Mm. What do you think God's going to do with the garment? All right. We must, as leaders, begin to repair the patches of of mediocrity. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, Lord. We must own the fact that we have allowed mm-hmm. mediocrity to tear the fibers of holiness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay. Sometimes in repairing, you gotta you gotta cut it. That's right. That's right. And when you mm-hmm. when you cut it, then you gotta replace it. That's right. That's right. Okay, and what the Bible says, no man put it a, a new piece uh, yes. on an old garment. That's right. That's right. Because it looks awkward. That's right. It looks out of place. Yes. Yes. God is saying, look, I need, I need a, a brand new manifestation. Glory. I need a brand new manifestation of the glory of the church. And that's why he dealt with the church at Pergamos. Yes. And so let's look at it. Let's go back to Revelation. Amen. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12. Jesus, yes. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write these things, saith he, which have the sharp sword with two edges. I want you to know today, today's preaching, I'm just regurgitating the words Pergamos, all right? If you're going to get mad, send me an email, Apostle Gray, that's G-R-A-Y at A-O-L dot com. But this is what the Lord said yes. to the church of mediocrity. He says, I know your works. Yes. Come on now. Come on, come on. 
I, I know sometimes even in my own mind, I think that maybe God don't see it. But God said, ah, I know your works. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Yes, thank you, Father. Those of you that have been faithful a long time. Thank you, Lord. Those of you that have, that have been givers in secret. Don't nobody know. Yes. But God says, I know your yes. works. Glory to God. God knows the works that you're doing. Amen. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Apostle Lance. Apostle Lance said, teach, Pastor. He says, uh, and I know where Satan's seat is. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, now, I could deal God. with that probably for about, a, about 30 okay. minutes, but I'm not. But God want, was letting the church of Pergamos know, I know you're in a bad situation. That's right. Because you got to live where Satan lives. Come on now. How many of you sometimes would wish, I wish I was in another job. I wish I was in another family. I wish I was in another community. Because the devil is all around. Yes. But I want you to know that God strategically places us where we need to be. Yeah, right. yes, Woo, God will set up a church where he wants to. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's right. You may not think on your job that's a church, but that's your church. The first church or whatever job you work at. All right. If you're not working, it's your home. All right. Amen. Your home needs to be a reverenced like a church. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes. You got all kind of people come to church. <laughs> all right. But Pergamos was situated where Satan's seat is. Yes. That means the devil had access yes. in the environment of where the church of Pergamos was. Right. Yes. Right. There's some things you're going to pray about that just, just ain't going to go. I don't care how much you pray. All right. Let me say that again. There's some things right. and situations that are not going to change no matter how hard you pray. Okay. Right. And God is saying, I understand where you are. Praise God. Praise God. You got to understand God has me here. Mm -hmm. This is it. So let me just deal with this. Amen. 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 No situation lasts forever, but I want you to know that God understands where, that you are where Satan's seat is. You see it all around you. Mm -hmm. I live in a community, amen, where drug dealers just down the street. Amen. They could do a drive by shooting at any time. And I could say, Lord, you know, God moved me out of this situation. And God would say, but if the way, where are you going? This is where I call you. This is where I call you to minister. I know what Satan's seat is. Satan ain't hiding nothing from God. He said, and thou holdest fast to my name and has not denied my faith. Even those days wherein Antipas was a faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Listen, there are those of us, and I include myself, that you've been like a target for the enemy. Yes. Amen. Like a martyr. Amen. Almost as if the enemy says, I am going to make an example out of you. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. How many, I've felt that before, yes, that, yes. that God, you know, the enemy has said of above all the other saints, mm -hmm. right. I'm going to make an example out of her. Amen. I, I want to see if what she say right. is really right. how she going to stand. Amen. How many of you know another man in the Bible went through the same thing? His name Job. called Job. Job. Yes. The Bible says that the enemy goes throughout the land seeking. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I can hear some of you saying now, well, I'm, I'm just going to be quiet so the enemy won't be a target. <laughs> Job wasn't loud. <laughs> Job wasn't anybody's preacher. <laughs> Job was just trying to provide for his family, be a good husband, you know, tend to his flock. He wasn't trying to save the world. Glory to God. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've said that before. Like, God, I ain't do, come on now. I ain't doing nothing great. Why, why me? Jesus. Come on. But the Lord told the church of Pergamos, I, I, I got you. Yes. Woo. Yes. You need to know no matter where you are, I got you. Yes. I know where Satan's seat is and what you got to deal with, but you've not denied my name. Jesus. Yes. You've hold fast. Verse 11, he says, but in all that I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them there that hold the doctrine of Balaam, 
who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Let's just stop there for a minute. This is what God has against the church of mediocrity. He says, you hold the doctrine of Balaam. And Balaam taught Balak to be a stumbling block before the children of Israel. Yes. Present day church, yes. I would say and submit to you, has caused more stumbling blocks yes. than stepping stones. Yes. All right, yes. yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Mm. Leaders who are not integritous. Yes. Leaders who um, are two faced. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that? One face. Mm -hmm. Before the people, yes. and then one face when the people don't see it. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. When we read about leaders that are falling, sometimes you scratch your head and say, "How that happen?" Amen. That's right. You're right. That's right. But it is because they lived a life of mediocrity. Yes. We cannot listen. What the Psalms tells us, you know. Not to stand in the way of sinners. Don't listen. Don't congregate. Don't cause someone else to stumble because of the way you walk. Because I will tell you, whatever stance you are, wherever you are, you got to be careful that you don't cause somebody else to stumble. If you're a fornicator and you are in leadership or you before the people, I want you to know there's some sister brother in the congregation that may be struggling yes. in their flesh and when they find out you fornicated and 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 that individual is weak in their mind yes. and weak in their faith and they don't have a relationship with god but they see you every week yes. come on now yes. Yes. people in 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 ministries do not have a relationship Right. With God like they should. And so what they do is they base salvation and holiness off of what they see. You remember the time when uh, they, they told us that uh, we would not need our Bibles, yeah. uh, that we needed to be the light. We in that day right now, it is not that they have taken physically Right. Our Bibles from us. Right. But come on now, most of us have our Bible on our phone. Yeah, yes. Yes. Amen. Myself included. I'm not I'm not talking down. Amen. But if you Amen. look at it, we don't carry the traditional Bibles. Amen. Amen. So we are in that day where folks don't read the word. All right. Yes. But they read you. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. You are the word that Amen. they read. Amen. Amen. And when they see you. In a fault. That's right. Yes. They say, well, if Sister So and so yes. is the leader over the ushers yes. and she, you know, shacking her husband, God, it must be okay. Because right. every Sunday she's still prophesying. Amen. 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 Right. That's right. It must be okay to curse. All right. And curse my husband out, my children out. Yes. And then be called up to prophesy. All right. Jesus. Jesus. We have caught the, the, the church is causing a stumbling block. Yes, right. it is. Right. People are tripping yes. oh. over issues oh. and they still in the church. Ooh. The church ought to be the place where we help to make the crooked place straight. Yes. Glory to yes. God. Yes. Amen. And the rough place yes. smooth. Yes. 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 Folks should not be. Be confused in the church. All right. Amen. Jesus. Amen. That I read one thing. All right. Jesus. And I see another. My God, Jesus. Yeah. All right. And one of the reasons why is because we have a, a very weak minded yes. church. Amen. Amen. If you look at the vast majority of church and church goers, they, they're not laying hands on the sick. Now, I'm not saying everybody's church. All right. But the Bible tells us, listen, if, if I had 10,000 members, glory to God, and all of them empowered with this word, like you all are empowered. Do you know what we could do? 
Jesus. Not raise a mega million dollar building, right. but literally change a community. Yes. If every person was empowered yes. and had the capacity of the, of the leader that they follow. Yes, had the same Glory apostolic anointing yes. Amen. that's on me is on you yes. and you got 10,000 come on now yes. mm. Jesus. and the reason why those 10,000 5,000 churches are not making the, Im- the impact God wants it's not that they're not making an impact don't get me wrong I do believe that some of them are making an impact but when I, when I see empowerment like that Man, they ought to be turned. I mean, right. I, yes, Lord. If we just mm-hmm. gather uh-huh. at somebody's house, yes. can you imagine ten thousand people on your street praying for your block? Yes. Yes. Not a few, because yes. even in those mega ministries of tens of thousands, when you call for events like that, maybe fifty, a hundred, two hundred right. show up. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And it is an impact, don't get me wrong, but a greater impact would be Glory to God. if all 10,000 showed up. Yes, Lord, you're right. One can change a thousand. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh. All right. mm. Hallelujah. You. Told you God is calling for God is calling for manifestation. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. For the for the body of Christ yes. to show up. <laughs> He says, listen, I, I have these few things against thee that behold the, the doctrine of Bala to cause the stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. When I read that, I said, God, what, what is that comparison to? You know, back in the day, they would sacrifice children. Lord, help my heart. They would throw children. Yes. As a sacrifice unto gods and idols. Even in the Bible, it tells us the instance where they gathered the virgins together. Yes, yes. And they slayed them. Yes. Man of God was was uh, faced with a dilemma because it was his daughter. Come on, y'all know the word. If you don't look it up. Yes. I lived in a culture in Hawaii where they literally would throw children in the volcano to keep the gods silent. Mm -hmm. When God began to show me this, my heart began to break because we're not reaching our children. And our level of mediocrity is causing them to miss the mark. Oh! We're eating the same things and we're teaching the same things that those who sacrificed unto idols. Yes. Yes, Lord. As leaders, we must be careful what we feed the congregation. That's right. That's right. Is it a methodology that comes from I- idolatry? Yes. Mm. Is the message causing me to worship things All right. greater than the creator? Jesus. He says, I got someone that gives you because you've eaten the wrong things. The things that they, that they say are sacrificed to idols. Jesus. We got to do it God's way, y'all. Amen. Amen. I mean, when I think about that, I think about communion. Mm, all right. And do you not know that there are unholy hands serving communion? Yes. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Hands that just committed fornication. Masturbation, mm. fondling little girls in the church. Yes, amen. Yes. And here they are serving you Holy Communion. Lord mm. Jesus, God have mercy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. We need to do it right. Communion is only one part yes. of the whole cer- ceremony. Yes. And for years, folks been missing it. Yes. Lord. You just serve the grape juice and the bread, but don't you know that that supper is much more than just that? Amen. Yes, it is. Mm. Amen. Mm. Oh, Those things sacrificed unto idols. Mm. 
Some of us got to examine our own lives. Am I feeding an idol? Yes. Or am I worshiping God? Jesus. See, sometimes we go to church because the camera's going to be on. Yes, you're right. <laughs> so I got to look good. I sit in the front row or, or I'm the praise and worship leader, so my outfit got to be intact. Yes. You know, I'm the, I'm the guest speaker, so I got to make sure everything is everything. Yes. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, look, I am I, I am one to sit on the day as guests and all of that. All of that's true. But you cannot make that the priority because then you begin serving the idol of your position and not worshiping God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This morning I was running late, even though I woke up early. early. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I just I don't know. I just take my time doing everything. And so I got, you know, I'm, it's, it's, I'm pressed for time. And uh, I didn't have time to put on makeup. In fact, I didn't even know my hair was pinned up till I got here. Um, why? Because it ain't, a, it's, it's about, I want to be on time to worship. I want to make sure there's an atmosphere set in this place conducive for you to receive. What God wants you to receive. Amen. Yes. Okay. It's not about a production, y'all. It's about, it's about worship. So we got to watch those things. Uh, ask your own self. Lord, examine me. Am I feeding yes. an idol? Yes, okay. When I go to work, am I working to feed an idol? What? Hey. He says to eat things, sacrifice the idol, and to commit fornication. We're creating a church that creates an atmosphere that it's okay to commit fornication. When I was growing up, I I promise you, when I was growing up, if you stepped in the, if you were fornicated, you stepped inside the doors church, you was trembling the whole service. Yes. Because you ain't want nobody. You saying, Lord, please forgive me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Forgive me. And, and you didn't feel you didn't feel forgiven until them tears came. That's right. Amen. Amen. And then I read a scripture one day that, you know, a man of God couldn't find repentance, even though he started with tears. That was Saul. Even though he started with tears, he couldn't find. I said, Lord, I don't want to be that. But the church was such a place that it did not tolerate fornication. We're living in a church right now where folks fornicate and will grab a mic and sing or whatever. Just sit in the pew and feel comfortable in their fornication. And for that, I don't blame the people. I blame the leaders. Creating a church where people are comfortable in their sin. That's right. Because the measurement that they're measuring, they're not measuring it against the word. No. They're measuring against what they see. Yes. You know, uh, we were raised, my sister's a preacher as well. And uh, we were raised that leaders are held to a higher standard. Yes. That's right. Um. I can't find that in the scripture. I believe that we all held to the same standard. Okay. But I do believe that leaders ought to be the same. You know, ought not be caught in the same situations as, as the people. Amen. Amen. That's right. You are supposed to be the representative. That's right. And I know that there's a fine line with that because sometimes in, in that we put people on pedestals. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is assuming the position yes. that I must be the example. Exactly. That's right. Okay, I must be something that leaders, I mean, that others can look up to. Yes. Okay, to say, you know, look on us. Yes. What did Peter and them tell us? That look on us. Yes. Look at what we do. Yes. If you don't ever have a Bible, do what I do. That's right. Or do what I did. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I want to live a life so that it, if my children forget about the Bible, they yes. can say, but this is what mommy did. That's right. Yes. In this situation, this is what mommy said. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thinking about the legacy of those that have gone on to be with the Lord, but they left the legacy. Yes, My grandfather, if I lived to be his age, would sometimes just sit in his room and sing hymns. Yes. About three hours, four hours and doing nothing but singing a hymn. Glory to God. Oh, glory. glory. He left a legacy. Yes. A legacy. And we got to do that, y'all. We are the end time church. This is it. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. I got to hurry up here. He told them, said, listen, uh, thou also has them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. So let me just share with you the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. I think I shared it with you all before. But I'm going to share it with you again today. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is a, is a, uh, a doctrine of heresy. Okay. Those who once believed in truth and holiness now protest, reject, and talk about that which they once stood for. Glory. I see that now. People that once stood for holiness. Preached holiness. Yes. Now saying it's okay. Mm-hmm. And are preaching against those who stand for yes, holiness. Right. That's right. That's Telling right. you it, you wrong. Yes. Yes. When it's going to say calling wrong, right, right, wrong. We in that day. Jesus. Wrong is telling you what's right. I had it happen. I had a, I had a, I had a, a parishioner uh, come uh, and literally while they're talking to me, the Holy Spirit says they, they wrong and trying to tell you what's right. Amen. And not that they were trying to correct me or anything. They wanted me to accept their situation, you know, to co-sign on it. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, well, apostle, I know, you know, me and you know, I know the word, you know, but I'm just stuck in this situation. no, that ain't right. Wrong can dictate what is right. right. Come on now. Amen. And those of us who know right have got to begin to say, I'm not going to allow wrong yes. to be right. Amen. Not in my atmosphere, not in my Amen. environment, not in what I have control yes. over. Amen. And when wrong approaches you, you got to correct that. Right. No, sis, no, bro. Come on now, you know better than that, and I'm and I'm not co-signing on that. Praise and then they'll laugh. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. devil wants to try you. Yes, That's right. oh, yes. Whose side are you on? That's right. Glory to God. Listen, y'all. Th- 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 there's going to be a review of our life. Jesus. Mm. And I don't know who's going to be there. Some people say the whole crowd going to be there. I don't know, okay. but your life going to be reviewed. Those 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 quiet uh, encounters that you think don't nobody know about. God gonna say that was your opportunity right there to witness. Do you not know one encounter with the right Christian person can change somebody's life forever? I've heard sis testimonies on the radio of how you know someone was about to commit suicide or someone's about to do something uh, and they had one individual to say something that would probably wasn't even really prophetically profound but it changed their life That's right. God wants to use you, the church the body of Christ yes. to make a difference okay, Dr. Nicola Tain, uh, their mindset was they believed in compromise mm. hello that's why Pergamus church was in trouble because they believed that doctrine of compromise. They believed it was okay to commit sexual sins and continue with God. Isn't that right? It happened in the day. It's what I just preached about. Yes. That's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And God hates, That's right. not dislikes. The Bible says he hates the Nicolaitans. Yes. Right. Woo! If I was fornicating, that right there would give me a reason to stop. Amen. Because God hates it. Glory to God. Woo, 
there are some things that God will tolerate. Right. Come on now, we all know yes. it. Yes. But God hates Jesus. the doctrine yes. of the Nicolaitans. Yes. My God, my God. Yes. Woo, Jesus. Yes. They believed they could govern themselves. Mm -hmm. The flesh making the judgments about sin and through the flesh right. and their carnal mind, yes. they decided. The Nicolaitans were once Christians, All right. mm. but they became deviant. Mm. The Nicolaitans are not a people, you know, that was born Nicolaitans. Okay. They made themselves. All Glory right. to God. Jesus. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, uh, when God indoctrinated you into the church, amen, you made yourself a Nicolaitan now by your actions. Mm -hmm. Jesus. You're no longer part of the body, but now you follow the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. A people governed by the flesh. Jesus. By, by the dictates of your own mind. By the carnality that's in your life. That's how they govern themselves. I see it all the time. Well, people will make decisions based on the, the, their flesh and what they see. This must be the way God wants me to go. You ain't praying about it now, but this must be the way God wants me to go because it looked lined up. And you're basing that off your flesh. Yes. Okay, what your flesh wants, what your flesh desires. And God says, I don't want you to make determinations after your flesh. The Bible says that we ought to be spirit led. Yes. And in order to be led by the spirit, you got to feed the spirit. Right. You got to give the spirit a stronger voice yes. in your life. But the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is not something just old. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is right here yes. in the 21st, in the 21st century. Okay. The doctrine of Balaam, uh, the Old Testament character of Balaam was the one who tried unsuccessfully to prophesy against the people of Israel. Yes. Balaam was the enemy of Israel. And he tried to prophesy against the children of God. But how many of you know that he couldn't do it? Mm. There are those in the 21st century who prophesy. And I'm going to say this in the way they, they prophesy against you, but they don't even realize that they're doing it. Okay. They, I've seen some people prophesy. Uh, I'll give you one instance. Uh, so, so someone calls someone up, uh, and the person begin to prophesy, and they begin to say, "I see you. I see you preaching. I see you teaching. I see you going very far." And the Holy Spirit said, "That ain't what I'm saying." Jesus. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm sitting there, and this person is prophesying, and, that other, and the person they prophesied to is like, oh, take it to you. <laughs> Having no idea what it takes to be a pr preacher, minister. There are people that are prophesying. It sounds good, but it's in error. It's not God. If we would really put our ear to the just the rim of heaven. Yes. God is not uh, into prophesying and telling you you're going to be a minister, pastor. God desires vessels yes. that can be containers of the anointing oh, yes, Lord. for this yes. present time. Yes. Uh, I'm going to close with this, and, and I encourage you to continue to read um, Revelation, and we're going to um, finish up Revelation chapter 2 at some point. But also those of you that want, um, because the doctrine of, of Balaam is, my God, I got about three paragraphs here. If you want it, send me a, uh, a message, apostlegray at AOL.com, and I'll copy it and give it to you. But I want to close with this today. The Lord was saying to me, I'm looking for containers that would contain the Anointing. So I begin to think about that. Okay. The containers do, don't make what it holds. 
Okay. I thought about it this way. When my, when my mom used to make Kool-Aid back in the day, she would make the Kool-Aid, but the pitcher that held the Kool-Aid had nothing to do with the making of the Kool-Aid. You and I got to know that what God has put on the inside of us, we ain't got nothing to do with that. He made it and he poured it. The container is so submitted that it doesn't move until the maker picks it up. The container must be able to hold what has been given. Okay. Okay. If the handle is fragile, the handle can break and the pitcher can fall and waste everything that's in it. I don't want to be that kind of vessel. So I say, God, strengthen even the weak areas of my life. Because I want to be a vessel when the hand of the Lord is ready to dispense. Yes. Because that's one of the purposes of the container is to dispense what's in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You've not been made just to contain, mm. but you've been made to dispense, yes. to distribute, yes. to pour out, and to release. God has filled us, y'all, as a body of Christ, and he has filled us. To be able to be poured out. Yes. To be able to be uh, used. Jesus. It's a single song. Fill my cup. Yes. Fill it up. Yes. And make me whole. A container. A true container. Is not satisfied. Until it serves its purpose. Jesus. I don't want to be a container. Uh, that just sits on the shelf. And be pretty. Yes. Never used. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking about when I thought about that as the Lord was talking to me today about that. I I still can remember the picture that we used for Kool-Aid. It was plastic and it wasn't round. It was kind of square. It was about this big, probably about two gallons, two gallons. And it was plastic and had a plastic handle and two gallons is pretty heavy. And, but that we picked that handle up, and you couldn't pour it straight because the spout, yeah. you know, the spout yeah, that they it put on it, it, it got worn out, yeah. and so we didn't use that anymore. You had to pour it from one of the corners. Glory Come on now. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. I want you to know that maybe maybe your top is worn out, Jesus. but God says I still got four corners I can use yes. to pour out of you. Some of us have been broken and beat up but the re- there's residue yes. still in the container we we use that 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 container so much until even when you washed it the purple Kool-Aid <laughs> come on now <laughs> I, I may not be talking to anybody in this room but I may be talking to somebody online the residue is still there. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Yes. Glory to God. The evidence yes. that you are a vessel of God is still yes. there. Glory to God. There were many vessels we could have chose mm-hmm. in our house to make Kool-Aid. But every time we, we picked that one. Glory. Every time we picked that one. I want to be that vessel that when it's time to be used, I want to be the one that God reached for. Amen. I know that it's not in this church, but I want us to pray against the spirit of mediocrity that's present in 21st century church. That leaders will begin to understand what they're doing and change. Yes. My prayer is change. I don't despise large ministry. I wish they would invite. Ooh, we would be a powerful, powerful. I mean, like, like the, like the most, I can't even describe the most powerful engine you could ever make. Jesus. Would be a church empowered. Yes. In the supernatural. 
God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. We certainly don't want to be like the church of Pergamos. He says at the end of that, he says, listen, uh, to him that overcomes, will I give uh, a white robe and a stone? And in that stone is going to be written a name that only you and God going to understand. I want my stone. <laughs> in order to get the stone, you got to overcome. Okay. You got to come on over to God's side and get what rightfully belongs to you. Father, we thank you today for your word. and Your word is truth and it's empowering to us. And I thank you, God, for this ministry, Lord God, that we are not a ministry of mediocrity. And I thank you for it, God. I pray that you would continue to uh, keep us striving for perfection and that our light would shine. Not in our own self-righteousness, God, in Jesus' name. But God, to God, for to God be the glory yes. is why we do what we do. Yes. And we lift up leadership over ministries all over the world. Yes. And we pray that they will have ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Yes. And that they will bring the, the church into a new posture. They will bring the church into a new glory. Yes. Father, for you are soon to come. And you want many. Revelation doth declare that there were many in the number. And I pray, God, that here on earth we'll begin to measure up with that number. I thank you, Lord, for those that are listening by way of the Internet. Enter into their room, their home, their car, their house, wherever they may be. And endow them with the power of the Holy Ghost. We pray this in Jesus' name. And those in agreement say amen Amen. and amen. We give God praise and glory today, don't we? Amen. Amen. Amen.